Mr. Warnley and Ms. Martinez and any other teachers that are going to be watching the recording, thank you for your time. We know it's extremely valuable and we are excited to have the opportunity to start something new in student government called the Student Government Initiative. Each year the student government will decide on one main thing to focus on in the student body to help make it better. Um, this year we decided to work on battling burnout and maximizing the amount of time students are able to recharge. Um, in his book, Addicted to Busy, Brandy Boyd says, um, ultimately every problem I see in every person I know is a problem of moving too fast for too long in too many aspects of life. This is because of uh, David Murray. This, this is because, as David Murray says in his book, Reset, um, we are living in a burnout culture. Um, it's always do, 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 more, 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 faster, faster, faster. Um, and this is a huge problem, and if it's not dealt with, it adds up, and over the years, it can turn into a very serious issue. So here's just an example of what, a, what one of our seniors said um, after being at Liberty for several years. Burnout at Liberty is something that has affected me throughout my entire upper school career. During the summer, I'm constantly hanging out with friends and being able to do social activities. But once Liberty starts, I collapse. Within days of the school year starting, nearly my whole social life fizzles, fizzles out, and I spend all of my time, free time and weekends sleeping because I have so little energy. This envi the environment that uh, Liberty provides is toxic and can drain a person. With all the tight, strictly followed rules, they add up and make it seem like a teenager can't truly be themselves or express themselves in the slightest. The mental drain that this puts on a person is insane. Likewise, the rigorous structures of classes keep each person waiting and praying for the strength to make it to the next class. This continues until you get home and then crash from lack of energy. It's exhausting putting up with this week after week. Burnout personally affects me each day, and my high school experience has been one that I want to get out of as soon as possible, rather than one that fosters genuine relationships and quality cultural engagement. Now, this senior also expect, expressed some things that they are truly grateful for at Liberty, but as Mary Angelou once said, at the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or what you did. They will remember how it made you feel. And for this senior, the predominant feeling is what they're leaving Liberty with. However, this doesn't have to be the case. This is one reason that we wanted to have a student government initiative this year. We really want to take ownership and be solution focused. As a student government, our mission is to represent and lead the upper school body by gathering regularly to discuss, vote, and implement decisions in an efficient and effective way regarding important upper school student life issues and events. In short, our vision is to positively impact the culture of the, of the US student body so that they might positively impact the culture for Christ, as seen in the mission statement. Having a yearly student government initiative is part of student government's mission. We believe that burnout is one of the biggest issues the upper school body faces during the school year that we can provide solutions for. to represent and help shape the student body. As such, we want to further uh, Liberty's mission and purpose, which is to classically educate more leaders to impact the culture for Christ. We have chosen burnout as our initiative. We believe that burnout is one of the biggest issues that the upper school body faces during the school year that we can provide solutions for. So what is burnout? ICD's 11 definition is, according to the International Classification of Diseases, burnout is defined as a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workload stress that has not been successfully managed. It is characterized by one feeling and feelings of energy, depletion, or exhaustion. It increases mental distance and reduces professional efficiency. Now why does this matter? 
Liberty's mission is all about producing moral leaders which will impact the culture for Christ. Now, how will we, the Liberty students, how are we supposed to do, how are we supposed to be able to accomplish this goal if we are constantly being burned out by being not mentally present and every single class period being drained and to a point where, like we've heard in the uh, quote from the Liberty student, we have, when we get home, we are just so drained we have to fall asleep. Additionally, based off of the student surveys, students clearly do not have enough time in their weekly schedule to be, sorry, schedule to be impacting the culture for Christ. This is directly, this issue is directly related to retention because students are feeling way too overwhelmed and stressed, so they eventually decide to leave. So according to the survey that you helped um, generate questions for, um, when students, when we asked the students who was planning on staying at Liberty, only two thirds said yes. Um, and one specific reason given was burnout. Um, so as we can see here, it is clear that from specifically the class of 2021, it goes from 19 in eighth grade to 16 in ninth grade and then to four in 12th grade. And we can see here in the class of 2024, which will be next year, it goes from nine, five, two, three, possibly two. Um, and it, it does truly matter because it impacts the student culture. So uh, a personal example is from middle school to high school, I've lost countless friends, but two in specific that I would consider being my best friends and because they leave, I consider going to different schools like Concordia because that's where they've gone. Um, and so it impacts student morale of everyone seeing their friends going to different schools and questioning, well, maybe I should go there too because I know so many people that go there. Um, specifically Concordia, most of my classmates that have left Liberty have gone to Concordia. Um, <clears throat> this is also important because one of Liberty's number one goal in uh, strategic goals includes a 90% retention rate. So the objective one is continued growth of 15% through a 90% retention rate, rate and new enrollment recruitment. 90% retention rate is very difficult to keep in the upper school and it has only maintained 59% retention rate. And it's worse when we look at the numbers from middle school going into high school. So let's explore this problem, burnout, a little more. What is burnout? We looked at the ICD-11 definition, but here's an easy illustration. Everyone here has a cell phone. We all know how annoying it is when the battery drains too fast and dies in the middle of use. Oftentimes, we use our cell phones way too much using apps that drain our phones battery fast. While we don't often realize it, this is a prime example of burnout. Our phones represent us. When we overwork ourselves and our power, too much for too long without rest, we shut down. We burn out just like our phones do. So our main argument, if burnout is the result of working too hard for too long, too little time given to rest and recharge, then the solution is minimizing overwork and maximizing healthy ways and times to rest and recharge. The burnout of the upper school students is largely due to working too hard for too long with too little time given to rest and recharge. Therefore, the solution is minimizing overwork and maximizing healthy ways and times to rest and recharge. Now we would like to frame some things realistically here. Uh, we understand that we are just teenagers who have never truly experienced a long, grueling workday, and that our thoughts on burnout might really just be a light workday for uh, you guys. Um, our current workload might also be seen as one of the lightest it's been at Liberty, and life at college or in the workplace will probably have uh, tougher things to do than what we may be experiencing here. However, that doesn't diminish the fact that there is still a burnout problem in high school that Liberty is experiencing. As the upper school student government, we don't just want to whine about it. We want to do something about this problem. Our goal is not just to finish the race, but rather to have 
enough energy or find the pace to finish this race well. For example, school is like a marathon. It's a long journey and in the end it is fruitful. However, you can't just sprint a marathon. You have to have water stations throughout the marathon so you can refresh and recharge. <clears throat> so our solutions are not just about ways we can minimize burnout, but rather ways we can help students recharge. So let's look deeply at some of the results from the Student Life Survey based on, and why based on the data, we believe that burnout is indeed a problem and what way specifically and how effectively we can help it. Uh, we're not gonna be able to look at everything, but I believe Mr. Fisher has shared the survey results with you so you can double check any of our findings. And we would also like to thank you for helping give us some of the questions so that we could ensure we were collecting the most relative and meaningful data to analyze things properly. Now, uh, we would like to start with some positive results from the survey. Uh, overall, 75% of students said that they enjoy being at Liberty, and the 25% that didn't, they actually had pretty nuanced comments. 64% said they had an overall good relationship with God this year, and 64.7% are still able to meaningfully connect with friends. Now, you'll also see that most students fall within the homework expectancy that Liberty has, but as we'll see, it's not just about how much homework we have, but rather what goes on in the day and how we're so drained afterwards and even during the day. Um, overall, comments from students were pretty fine. Uh, the teachers, the community, uh, uniqueness and friendships all about Liberty uh, received pretty good reviews. However, uh, the workload is being too overloaded and overcompressed, making things difficult to be positive also leading to some students not wanting to stay throughout all of high school, thus having a burnout problem. Uh, many people also said Liberty had a great Christian environment and that homework was also a lot from each class and that there were definitely some areas that could be improved on. <clears throat> So burnout can be a very bad, bad term, so we wanted to stick with the ICD-11 definition for our survey. So based on this definition of burnout, two-thirds of the student body said that they're either always burnt out or regularly burnt out. 34% said that they are burnt out almost every week and feel like a battery that is constantly drained and can't even charge. No matter how much sleep or time I get off, I still can't reach. One-fifth of the entire upper school has the highest level of anxiety, and we carefully defined anxiety in the survey according to leading cognitive behavioral therapy surveys. This is very concerning, but it makes sense. Anxiety typically goes hand-in-hand -hand with burnout and an, an inability to unplug, but it's not energy that keeps us going, it's worry. So this question was very important to our survey on burnout, and I think that Mr. Warren was the one who suggested it. The question asked was, at the end of the week, most school weeks, how exhausted do you typically feel? Based on the results, over half of the students, 58.8%, said that they are very exhausted and are never recharged for the next week. Only two students, 4%, said they are not that exhausted at the end of the week that they look forward to the weekend, but don't feel like they're totally spent by Friday at 3.15. Based on the definition of burnout, this slide shows that the students at Liberty feel, are feeling the effects of burnout, which again, according to ICD, involves number one, feeling of energy, depletion, or exhaustion. <laughs> But a big one we found has to do with the average student's sleeping habits. A fifth of the students overall are getting less than six hours of sleep, and only 16% are getting the recommended amount of sleep, which is eight to 10 hours. Uh, and nearly half of the student body is going to bed at 11 or later and are not getting enough.
Besides physical rest and some meaningful ways of recharging was also something concerning that we found. 52.9% uh, of the students said that they are not doing well, which is four below on the chart, and are not getting the meaningful rest that um, they need and are, aren't doing things that are actually a recharging and revitalizing. So, uh, coping habits. Uh, we asked people on a scale of 1 to 10, how often would you say your coping methods have been busier than your school schedule? Uh, 10 being very healthy, 5 being somewhat healthy, and 1 being very unhealthy. We would like to point out that um, very few students actually said they feel like they have a very healthy uh, or a few very healthy coping habits. Um, some of these key takeaways. Um, 41.2% of students rate themselves uh, moderate to four, like, or five or below, so <coughs> below average, um, which is two out of every five students. Almost half of the student body is not coping well to any things they have uh, going on at school. So one of the big problems with burnout we feel is that it affects students' spiritual lives. So, I mean, big ones have been Bible intake, church involvement, um, even spiritual life with friends. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to incentivize some ways to um, get these students to develop spiritual habits even more. So we want to reward these healthy habits. Um, one of our ideas was to um, have parents or teachers sign off if students want to um, grow in any ways like Bible reading or journaling or prayer or anything like that outside of school. Um, we thought even we could add it into Bible class. So maybe um, the Bible teacher could assign homework, but it's just personal Bible reading that could be rewarded if the students want to do it. Um, and some of these rewards, they could look like, like maybe free snack shack or just extra non-uniform days, little things like that. Um, we also understand that um, getting, growing closer to God shouldn't, like students shouldn't want to do it just for rewards, like it should be an end in itself. Um, but we also realize that at this age, it's hard to just start the habit. Once you get a habit going, it's easier to do it, and eventually you could even start to just do it from desire. But just to start the habit, we think it might be a good idea to implement some rewards. Okay, so we took all of the um, all of the results from our survey and we averaged them out to get a Liberty students schedule. Um, so at least the question of when students could actually develop these healthy spiritual and daily life habits. Based on the data, here's the average the upper school Liberty student schedule. What's important to notice here is that one, the average student only spends one hour of downtime in the evening. That's key recharge time. In a sense, a lot of students are placed in a real difficult choice of doing extracurricular or having more time to recharge, which does not seem fair. Two, as we stated earlier, because there's so much packed at the end of the day, adding on a couple hours of homework a day, even if it's within the expected homework load, it means kids aren't going to bed early enough to get a good night's sleep meaning they're already started the next day depleted, and, and then the cycle continues. So we looked at some of the data, and we're trying to get at the heart of the problem. So we basically have a two-pronged solution. Step one is minimizing the overloading that drains the student, and step two is maximizing our ways to recharge the student. So uh, one of our solutions that we've come up with is to try to have five study hall periods every week. Um, we think that this would reduce burnout because it would first of all minimize overworking more. It would just be really helpful to have more time during the school day to get homework done at school so that we wouldn't have to do as much homework at night and we could go to bed earlier and then be more productive the next day. Um, 
but it would also be helpful just to have that time. You wouldn't even have to use it for homework, but it would just be helpful to have just another or more time during the day to take a break, get a little bit more recharge. Um, you could probably be more productive than later at that night um, because you got recharged during that study hall period. And so how to practically make this work, we think it would be a good idea to replace the double lag period. So we found in the student survey we took that that period is actually only used for the lab, which it's supposed to be used for, only around 25% of the time. And so we, what we wanna do is eventually have a meeting with you, Mr. Wormley, and also Mrs. Klar, um, to see if this is something we could realistically make work to, to try to get that um, double lab period replaced. So we asked the question of how often are the double lab periods used for first instruction time and then an actual lab? And it is evident for having the second lab period as an actual lab period, it is rarely used as just a lab period. Most of the time it is used for work time in science or um, a study hall. Sometimes it's used for labs, but considering we have um, 54% either being study hall or work time, it's not used for what it should is intended for, which is a science lab. So this is a quote from a ninth grade student, Jada Miller. A big reason having study hall every day is necessary is because study hall is the best time, if not the only time for some students, to go to teachers. For example, I go to my math teacher during study hall when I have individual questions. This has helped and benefited me so much this year. Most days I have to leave right after school and many teachers aren't available before school. So usually study hall is the only option. There have been many Tuesdays, which is her day without study hall, that I've been stuck because I have a question for a teacher but I don't have time that I can just go to them. Sometimes I just need to ask a teacher a brief question or check in with them on something and study hall is the best time to do that. So with this quote in mind, it's very important to address certain common complaints. Um, an important issue is the imbalance in the homework for the non-core classes. Language, rhetoric, and electives have all had an average higher homework load according to our survey. Uh, this can lead to issues with overloading projects on one day, and we did want to propose a solution, so we came up with the idea that we bring back the test and large assignment calendar, um, and that's posted on the forum out over there on that bulletin board. And we as student government can notify Ms. Martinez or other teachers if there is conflict with these large assignments, so that will reduce our problem. And many students felt as if um, they're doing busy work, that the teachers just feel like they're putting a grade in the grade book just so they can get that certain amount of grades, and it doesn't actually pertain to the students genuinely learning. And many students have tried to bring this idea up to teachers, and sometimes they're often shut down. Uh, this can lead to this feeling of student powerlessness, and so that is why we have implemented this idea where we can come and present to you guys about our solutions. Um, another solution that we have proposed is the Liberty Survival Guide presentation. Um, we do realize that as students, we do tend to complain a lot. Um, however, by doing this with the actual presentation, it will give the students a chance so they can genuinely know what to do and make it so that the teachers aren't as confused um, when they're just complaining when it's a genuine problem. The student government could have a 20 minute presentation twice a school year to help give advice about how to keep track of homework, assignments, and large tests. For example, we could teach them how to stay organized, um, teach them how to create good study habits along with getting homework done efficient, efficiently and excellently, um, how to work with teachers when you feel something is unfair or you're feeling overwhelmed, learn how to protect a healthy social environment where drama and toxic people don't bring you down. How to get good sleep, which is big. It can't just, um, we can't just try to go to sleep at 11 and then be awake by six, if not earlier, um, and expect to do excellent work. 
Um, the importance of good hydration and diet, the importance of being active and working out, um, the importance of recreation, all aiming at helping our peers be productive and find a pace to finish the race. It is also extremely important that we empower students to meet with teachers if they feel overwhelmed due to the amount of homework and have the ability to have a conversation. It's important that students feel heard. Um, so we wanted to address productivity, which is also very important. Uh, so as the slide shows, only 55.1% are feeling not very productive or not productive at all. Um, and this is very important, especially because Liberty is so rigorous and expects educational excellence. Um, we want students to be productive and to be able to produce excellent work. So our second solution would be to maximize the recharging time. These are some of the tools that are provided by the school that will allow us to recharge. These are like water stations like we referred to earlier. In this case, in the marathon, that is a liberty education. With the students busy and ongoing schedule, they are completely exhausted by the time they get home. This affects the students' burnout, motivation, the school student's retention, and the overall mental health. And then here are some of the ideas of how we could fix that problem by really plugging into the time that's already built into the school day for us to recharge. year, the student body has discussed the importance of having things to look forward to. Some of these ideas are Spirit Wear Fridays or Non-Uniform Fridays, which would happen the last Friday of every month, either one or the other, or a combination. We've also discussed the Varsity Upper School Theme Days, where on specific home games, we'd have a non-uniform theme for the entire upper school, and we were thinking about two per quarter to not make it too much. We were also thinking about a longer lunch and a well plan. This will allow students to have more time to spend with God during the day, since with all of our homework, many of us, including me, find it hard to spend time truly diving into God's word. I also had an idea about a, about a Bible study group, and if we were to have a longer lunch, about 50 minutes or so, we could have a Bible study group that would happen for about 20 to 30 minutes. This would allow students to recharge and continue their day with a more positive attitude. The long-term solution is, a block, is the block schedule. From my personal experience, the block schedule has helped students understand and enjoy what they are learning more. I found that the teachers are less likely to have to rush through every class to fit everything in, and that the students have more energy. Our current eight-hour class, eight class schedule, oh, my bad, eight-hour class schedule gets Liberty students burned out very quickly. Having, oh, I'm sorry, I can't get this to, Scroll down. Just the arrow or the remote. Oh, okay. Mm, that doesn't work. Okay. Having eight classes in the day, having in class work and getting homework from almost every class, and then going to sports and then coming home and doing work until you go to bed takes a toll and it is very hard to keep up. I seriously encourage you to think about this. So, our first, uh, okay, a couple of reasons we've discussed is that we don't have any real breaks. We've also discussed depth over breadth. We've talked ab about having fewer but longer periods, giving the students more time to digest and truly learn what we are studying. Another schedule that we've planned out is the 13572468 schedule, you could call it. On Mondays and Thursdays, we have hours one, three, five, and seven for 70 minutes. And on Tuesdays and Fridays, we would have hours two, four, six, and eight. On Wednesdays, we'd have a special schedule. As a way to recharge for the rest of the week, we would have four 15-minute classes, which, which would be our core classes, a 15-minute lunch, office hours, and a study hall where we, where we could go to teachers and ask questions, an assembly in-house, which would be an, about an hour and five minutes, enough time to have 15 minutes for assembly and 15 minutes or 15 minutes for assembly and 15 minutes for house. This could possibly work better in the morning. Our last block schedule idea is having four class or four days of the week 
being our normal class schedule and on Wednesdays having a full study day where we can have office hours and study periods. So, and then we had another schedule idea which is to reduce the, the credit requirements and to make the days shorter. So we asked the seniors this question, if we could do only one thing to change up the schedule, make it less draining and more sustainable, but still academic, academically rigorous, what would it be? And then, so the answer was to shorten the day so we have more time to recharge after the school day. Even if we had three hours of homework, if we got out even one hour, hour earlier, we would, we'd have that much more energy to get things done later. That would be way more sustainable. Um, just to restate our main argument, if burnout is a result of working too hard for too long with too little time given to rest and recharge, then the solution is minimizing overwork and maximizing healthy ways and times to rest and recharge. So how can we do this? A two-pronged solution. We have three big solutions for minimizing burnout. Firstly, and this is our big ask, is having five study halls per week to break up the consistent compression of the day. Apart from this, we just become less and less productive as the day goes on, we'll, and it's more likely we'll be staying up late doing homework, creating a vicious cycle of exhaustion. Second, posting a large test and assignment calendar with accountability to minimize school work overload, and this will help because both teachers and students will know what is going on in every class. Thirdly, having a Liberty Survival Guide led by the student government to help our peers in dealing with the stresses of school in healthy ways. Our other solution focus is maximizing recharging times. We can do this by one, encouraging our peers to make the most out of already given recharging stations in the high school, like the spiritual life rhythms and student life events, with some tweaks and more accountability. And two, by introducing new and simple ways to recharge in school, and three, incentivizing healthy life and spiritual life habits. Lastly, we think the best long-term solution is moving away from an eight-hour day. If we want to find the pace to finish the race, a schedule, we need a schedule that is more sustainable, that has a more sustainable daily pace. Burnout is a serious problem. It's a serious cultural problem and a serious problem even here at Liberty and it is undermining Liberty's ability to educate moral leaders who impact the culture for Christ. As students of Liberty for many years, myself being 11, and other members of student government, it is our job to help better a student culture in, a way, in any way that we can. By giving, students, by giving students the opportunity to recharge their minds and bodies, it allows for more energizing, energized students, which allows for a greater impact for Christ. We hope that this presentation has been valuable to you, and we look forward to working with you towards implementing these solutions. Thank you both for your time. With that, do you have any questions?